Welcome. Welcome. We have missed seeing you indeed, and we are so glad to be back, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, it is fun doing Sabbath school with all of you. And so this morning, Arlo, who just turned three, is going to have our opening prayer for us. Then we start right now, serving everything against the Amen. 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 Okay. Now, Samuel, how will recite Psalm 8 for us? I am going to recite Psalm 8. This psalm is written by King David. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who hath set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings have thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, that you may silence the enemies and avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the works of your, thy fingers, the moon and the stars that thou hast ordained. What is man that thou mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visit him? For you have made him a little lord and angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have created him with dominion over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever pass through the sea. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Thank you for that scripture. Now we're going to sing Good Morning, It's Sabbath with the Graves family. Yes. Teacher Zipporah, over to you. Good morning. Good morning. You say happy Sabbath? Happy Sabbath. Hi, friends. Happy. I'm Teacher Zipporah. And I'm Teacher Zipporah. And this is my friend Lily. Hi, 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 Lily. Hi
and he was angry with Elijah. So Elijah had to run away. <gasps> he ran and he was hiding. He was hiding from King Ahab. And so Elijah, he ran, he ran, and he ran behind a big rock. Oh, he was hiding. Can you see him? See. Can you see him? No. No. Can King Ahab see Elijah? No. No. Oh. There you go. I know. So only God knew where Elijah was hiding. Hey. Mm-hmm. And there was water by the big rock, so Elijah could take a nice drink, but hey. there was no food. No food. No rice. No rice. No beans. No beans. No cereal. No cereal. Nothing yummy to eat. No, so what will he put in his tummy? Why? What will he put in his tummy? Why? <laughs> but God will take care of Elijah. So Elijah, he prayed to God to take care of him. Can you pray? Ooh, he prayed. And then he went to sleep by the big rock. He said, phew, phew, phew. And then he woke up. He said, good morning. Good morning. And then he went to go take a drink of water. But where was his food? Where did it go? And so Elijah prayed to God that he would take care of him. And God did take care of Elijah. And so soon, Elijah saw big black birds. Would you like to hold on? Flying through the sky. Whoa, can you show our friends? Can you show them? Yeah. Here, hold it up so they can see. Whoa, they're flying. Wow, this is I a... know, and both of the birds had some food in their beaks. You ready? Right. Watch this. Okay. Whoa, can you hold it? Yeah. Whoa. Yes, hold me a snack. They're holding a snack. And they were bringing the food for our friend Elijah. Uh-huh. And so every day the big birds would fly and bring some food for him. Can you bring some food for him? Ready? Okay. And you gotta bring it and you gotta go <laughs> for him. <laughs> you hold it? Good job. Yeah, do you help you? Good job, hon. Good Uh-huh. That's the thing home is now. Uh-huh. It's good. It's good. And so every day okay. God would send these birds to Elijah. To feed him. Okay. And every day, Elijah said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for my food. Oh. Thank you for taking care of me. Me. <laughs> so one year. Yeah, my day. Two years. Two years. Three years. Three years. No rain. No rain. No rain. No rain. Now there was no more water. It all dried up. Oh, no. And so Elijah had no water to drink, and he had no food to eat. Was he hungry? No. Oh, he was hungry. Oh, no. Oh, no. And all the plants died. Oh, no. Oh, no. But God sent the big birds with food for Elijah every day. You want to hold the birdie? Thank you. And God took care of Elijah all the time, right? Right. And God will always take care of you. Can I, Birdie, fly home? Ready? <gasps> bye, bye, Birdie. Bye, Birdie. And we can say thank you, God. Thank you, God. For taking care of me. Me. Just like you took care of Elijah. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, honey. That's the end of our story. Are you ready to practice our memory verse? Yeah. You ready to pick an apple on the apple tree? Yeah. And we can show our friends. Right. Yeah. Okay, ready? Here's our basket. It's empty. We gotta put apples inside. All right, you ready? Right. You gotta say, my my God ha. will yeah. meet me all uh, your uh, needs. Me. You say, can you say Philippians? Four. Good try. Four. Twelve. Nineteen. Sixteen. Good girl. Can you pick an apple? You put it in that basket. Okay, my turn. Ready? Okay. My God will meet all your needs. Philippians 4.19. Ready? Okay. Can you hold the basket for me? 
Here comes my apple. Thank you. I want that. All done. Can you say happy Sabbath? Happy Sabbath. Say bye-bye, friend. Bye-bye, friend. Thank you for that story, Teacher Zipporah. It's, it's good to remember that God takes such good care of us, doesn't he? And when he takes care of us, then we are able to take care of others, aren't we? Yeah. Now, let's sing again with the Graves family. And this song is very fitting with that story that we just heard. So let's sing, You Are My Hiding Place. and family for that beautiful song. Now the Howell family is going to do our kindergarten story. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Welcome to story time. We are the Howell family. And today I have a very special story for you entitled, The Boy is Alive. It happened more than 2,500 years ago. Can you count from 1 to 2,500? Well, I know it's a rather big number for some of you. It happened in a place called Zarephath, and Zarephath is located in modern day Lebanon. And Samuel's gonna show us on the map where Lebanon is. Lebanon is over here. Thank you, Samuel. And Nathan is gonna read for us the memory verse taken from Nahum chapter one, verse. Seven. The Lord is good. A trampling the day of trouble, and you know those who trust in him. Thank you very much, Nathan. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. We're gonna find out in this story those people who trusted in God. Well, Ahab was a very mean and wicked king. He was the king of Israel. He led the children of Israel to worship all the gods besides the God of creation, the one who made the heavens and earth, the one who made you and me. They worshiped Baal. So this made God very displeased with them. God sent Elijah, his prophet, to King Ahab. And Elijah said, As long as the Lord God lives, it will not be do no rain until I say so. King Ahab got very enraged and Elijah fled to the brook of Cherith where God hid him and kept him safe. Nobody could find him. Now, it didn't rain for three years. Do you know what would happen, children, if it didn't rain for, three, for that long? Nathan? That plants will die up. Thank you. The plants will wither away and die. Uh, the animals and, and people will starve from hunger and thirst, and the brooks and streams will dry up as water evaporates. And that's exactly what happened where Elijah lived. 
the brook dried up, so God told Elijah to go to Zarephath, where he had chosen a widow to take care of him. Now a widow is a woman whose husband has died. This widow had one son. When Elijah got to Zarephath, he found the widow picking up sticks. He asked the widow, he said, Bring me some water and some bread. Well, the widow told Elijah that she didn't have any um, food or any, anything to offer him, that she only had a little bit of flour and oil to make something for herself and her son. And after that, they would die because she didn't know where her next meal was going to come from. Elijah assured her that God would provide. So the woman trusted Elijah and went ahead and made something for Elijah. And to her greatest surprise, after she had made something for Elijah, she went back and looked in her bin and in her jar and she found flour and oil. So every day after that, they had enough flour to make food for Elijah, herself, and her son. But one day, while Elijah was still in her house, something very terrible happened. The woman's son got very sick and died. Now death is a very painful thing. So I imagine as she was telling Elijah what had happened to her son, she was crying. Elijah had compassion on her and told her to bring her son to him. And the woman um, brought her son to Elijah. Elijah took her son up to the room which she had given him to lodge in and he placed her son on his bed and prayed fervently to God that God would restore him, that God would give, revive the son and give him back his life. And God answered his prayer. The boy came back to life. And I can imagine that Elijah ran downstairs in a burst of excitement exclaiming, Your son is alive! Your son is alive! She was um, elated. Now, children, I know I gave it away, but what? How do you think the woman felt? When Happy. She felt. Ex she felt excited. Did you guess that? Well, you did. You're right. She was very excited to have her son um, back again with her. Now, she told the. She told Elijah that now she knows that Elijah is a man of God, and the words that he speak he speaks are true. Children. This story teaches us something very important about God, that God answers our prayers in the best way that he sees fit. So if you're ever feeling blue, uh, worried or afraid, particularly now that the world is going through a pandemic, um, a coronavirus pandemic, talk to God about your concerns. Tell him even your joys. He really wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from you today. I hope you talk to him. And I hope you enjoyed listening. Bye-bye. Goodbye. 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 Thank you so much for that story. Wow. Is there anything that's too difficult for God? No. No. God can do absolutely anything. And I love that about him is no matter how big your problems are, God is bigger. And does he long to give us good things? Yes. 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 Yeah. Does he long to bless our family? Yes. Yeah, he definitely does. So let's sing again with the graves. Thanks for singing deep and wide with us. Now, and, and now we family's going to tell us three primary stories. This week's lesson is called Now I See. 
Hmm, I wonder if that's a hint about what might happen in, to Saul in this week's lesson. I guess we'll have to wait and find out. The message for this Sabbath is God's love changes people. Our memory verse is found in Acts 9.15. The man is my chosen instrument. I wonder what it would feel like to be in Saul's shoes on the road to Damascus. When you're suddenly blinded by a bright light and that told that you are persecuting God's people by Jesus himself. Let's say a prayer before we begin the rest of our story. Dear God, please open our eyes to see you as Saul did. Help us to remember that your love can change anyone. In your name we pray, amen. Saul sat quietly in Judas's house. He did not look as fearsome or masterful. He was not the take charge person he had been only three days ago. He sat quietly, his head bowed. He spent all of his time praying. There was so much to pray for. Saul had certainly prayed for forgiveness. He was horrified when he thought of the Christians he had persecuted. And he had also thanked and praised the Lord again and again for his salvation. The memory of actually seeing Jesus on the road to Damascus still thrilled him. He lived the moment over and over in his mind. Judas and his family offered Saul food to eat, but he did not take it. He would not even take anything to drink. Finally, they just left him alone with his thoughts. The news spread quickly through Damascus. Saul had arrived. Saul, the mighty hunter of Christians, the believers had heard he was coming and now he was here. But it was said he was sitting in Judas's house. Rumor had it that he had um, somehow been struck blind. People learned that he had been led into the city by a child. Something strange had certainly occurred, but no one was quite sure what. Three days had gone by since Saul's encounter with the Lord. Then Ananias, a follower of Jesus, had a vision. The Lord appeared to him and said, Get up and go to Straight Street. Find the house of Judas. Ask for a man named Saul, who is from the city of Tarsus. He is there now praying. Saul is blind. He has seen you in a vision. You will go to him, pray, and lay your hands on him. Then he will see again. Ananias was understandably nervous. He asked the Lord, um, or he told the Lord that he had heard that Saul had done terrible things in Jerusalem and was afraid of what might happen here. The Lord assured Ananias, do not worry, go. I have chosen Saul for an important work. He said he must tell his people about me. He will tell kings, Jews, and people of foreign lands about my love for everyone. Ananias obeyed the Lord. Ananias found Judas's house. He found Saul sitting quietly without sight, waiting for him. Ananias was filled with compassion. He laid his hands on Saul. Brother Saul, he said, the Lord Jesus sent me. He is the one you saw on the road on your way here. He sent me so that you can see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell off from Saul's eyes. He could see again. And Saul asked to be baptized at once. He did not even take time to eat or drink. Yes, God called Saul, and he called Ananias too. They serve the Lord for the rest of their lives. Today, God has called you to be his witness. Will you choose to listen? Now it's time for a Bible quiz. Now let's get to it. What was Ananias' feeling when God told him to go to Saul? A, happy. B, worried. C, terrified. Be worried. Correct. Okay. What fell hey, off? Good job, no? What fell off of Saul's eyes? Scales. Yes. Good job, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many days later did God talk to Ananias? Uh, three days? Yes. <laughs> Where did Ananias touch Saul? Um, on the shoulders? Correct. <laughs> True or 
false. Did Saul ask to be baptized? What? Ah! Yeah. Yeah. That's all for tonight. Bye-bye. To discover more about the story of Paul's conversion, you can find it in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 10 through 19. But don't stop there. The book of Acts is filled with more stories about Paul's journey. With God, keep reading and discovering how you can spread the love of God to the world. Thank you so much for that story and game. That was a lot of fun. Now, I want us to think for a moment, though. If God had a plan for Saul, Saul, who was an enemy of God's people, how much more does he have a plan for you? What does God long to do in your family? Now let's sing, then I remember with the Graves family. So how do we weave these three stories together? You have Elijah and the time of no rain. You have, again, prophet Elisha and the widow Zarephath and her son, who seemed beyond hope. And then you have Saul, whose sight is restored. But here's, here's the thing I want us to think about, and that is that... God blesses us so that we can bless others, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 God gives such great gifts, but those are gifts that he asks us to use for him. So what are some ways that God has blessed your family? Um, What are some ways that God has given your family something that maybe you could use um, to help others? Yeah. And uh, and if they don't have food, you can give them food. Yeah. I mean, God has given us food that we can bless others with. Yeah. I mean, for instance, our family has had a little bit of a garden this year, haven't we? Yeah. It has not been a big garden, but it has definitely given us blessings that we can share. And our garden in the flat yard is big. It has definitely given us blessings that we can share with those around us, hasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I want you and your family, this afternoon, after church, after Sabbath school, to sit down and think about what are the blessings God has given you, and then who are the people you can share that blessing with. Now, let's have a word of prayer with the Hasegawa family. We invite you to spend a moment of prayers together in your home.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for our family, friends, school, and teachers. Please give us wisdom and help. Please help us all to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's sing I Love You So Much with Grace family one more time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have a happy Sabbath. Goodbye. And we are so glad you have joined us, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Same time, same place, with Children and Family Discipleship Sabbath School. Goodbye. Goodbye.